Often when you are making models in SketchUp, you want to put curves in place. So I'm going to show just a couple of the arcs which SketchUp has. And on their own, they're quite simplistic, but you can build them together into more complex shapes, which I'll show you later on. So if you think about um, your jar, which is like here, you've got a lot of straight surfaces and you've got a lot of curves. So there's a curve there, and there's a curve there, and all over the place is curves here. So being able to use arcs well is a very useful tool. So I'm gonna show you a few ways, and you can combine them. As with everything, the more you practice using them, the better you become at using them, and the more creative ways of using curves will come to you. So the first tool I'm gonna to show you is the simplest way of making anything, which is an arc. So I select a point, which is gonna be the origin, the zero point, click, and I'm gonna try to make an arc. It's gonna be about you know, 1.5 meters base, and I want to put a 45 degree angle in. Okay, so I just type 45, and there it is. I can um, then go to two meters and put an arc of 55 in. Then I could go to, I don't know, three meters and put a uh, 65 in. And I can go forward. I'm, I'm doing, I'm building things up. So that is a, let's say how far you want it from the origin. And it's saying, what angle you want it to be at. You can also, of course, just do it by eye, by saying, you know, about here, I want it about, well, I'm going to the origin, or about here, I want it to be about there. So you can do it by eye, you can do it by um, measurements. You could say, I've got, I don't know, I'm taking um, freehand tool, so I can just draw things. I'm doing that, I've just made a random uh, shape. So from the origin, I want to go to here and just make a load of arcs that are going to bisect around you know, whatever. Take the razor tool and get rid of the bits which, you know, I don't need, and you know, keep doing it with the original curve. And you can imagine if I've done lots of these, I'd actually have a series of curves with the endpoints describing that weird curve. So you can just play with this, and there's a whole lot of ways to use it. But that's the simple arc tool. Uh, another one which is really useful is the two-point arc. So I, again, have a point one and point two, and then just pull it up into being whatever kind of arc. So that's a very shallow arc, just kind of capping it off, and that is almost like a ball. And if you think about if we were to draw a sort of rectangle and wanted to put a dome on this for whatever, we can say point one is the east corner, part two is the other corner, and I can make, looks a bit like, um, I don't know, like a tomb, or go a bit bigger, something else, but I'm going to do that, then I could always get rid of that point there, I could orbit around, I could then pull this out, you know, I've made a bit like a sarcophagus, or something similar, um, that's just one way, so back onto the view from before, and you know, with this tool, you can do various bits. You know, I can go to the midpoint, which is about there, and pull out. I could go from you know, that corner to that point there, and I can pull out. I can, you know, take the razor and move chunks there. I've so got like a lemon, warty lemon shape, and take this, go from that point to somewhere in space, and pull it out. There's 
anything you want, you can do. It's actually quite a good tool for getting a nice uniform arc. The another one is a three-point arc. So I select um, the first point, the origin, another point, and then the base. So the arc must travel through these three points. And you can see that it's it's how you want to describe it, which is the hard thing. Um, we can take so camera standard views right, which we are so we can straight on. Um, we can take a rectangle. And we can take three point arc, so we want a curve which touches that point there, touches the middle of the top of that, and touches the bottom of that. So we've now described it round, or I know, let's take another example. We could say we want you know, to touch that point there. So three points. So one, two, and three. So if, if for some reason your model has to be, you're limited by that point there, you can make sure it goes through that. Um, there's a whole load of different things you could do. Or let's say your model wants to go through that point. Oops, sorry. Let's say you've got a point out there, in, around there. You can use it first. So one, two, and three. So it actually has, in this case, actually gone through that point. Um, there's a whole load of things you can do that with. And in later examples, we will be using these arcs, so you'll see exactly how they fit into producing models. So I'm going to move that. Now, all of these three, they have one thing in common, which is they produce just a line. And you know, if we take this uh, arc here, which is a uh, two-point arc, you can produce that kind of simple line. Then you can finish it by taking a pencil tool from end point to end point and produce a solid shape. Um, this is very easy to do. The last kind here is this one, which is a pi. It is very similar to the simple arc in that we have the same kind of um, protractor. Take an origin, take a point out, a radius, take an angle, so whatever. And it fills it in for you, so you actually get a piece of pi, which then, of course, you can take and you can extrude. So it's very simple. So another really cool thing you can do with arcs is produce a tangent, which is where you sort of round off the corner. This actually is a good example of tangent. So how do we produce a tangent, which is exactly the same, which means you take off, you go along, you take off the, from the curve, it comes around and at exactly 90 degrees it carries on the other bit. So you have an exact 90 degree. Um, or to put it differently, if I had the Pi tool, um, it's a 90 degree section cutout. Okay, so how do I do that? So I've got a, um, a block here and I'm going to take the two-point arc tool, and I want to round this corner off. Um, now, this, I want to go from there to there. Okay, so I want that corner rounded off. What I do, just take it to the side, not clicking, and bring it down, and slowly work it down, and see there, it goes purple, which means it's exactly the edge. Now, obviously, I can take it, I can do that, and take off just section, if I should double click now, it will just do that, but I want it to be an exact piece. So click to the side, take it down, it goes purple, double click, and it's rounded the edge off. I take my cursor to the other edge, and I want to do the same identical curve. Double click. Bottom here, double click. Bottom here, double click. So I've quite simply rounded off all these corners in a really nice way. 
So what happens when you have a specific distance you want to uh, make this curve? So this box is quite a few meters across and I want to have a half a meter of curve taken off here. Now there are more than one ways of doing this, um, like anything in SketchUp. One way you can do it is by starting at the corner here, drawing to the box, oops, wrong tool selected, drawing to the box. Um, how far it goes up doesn't matter, but I'm going to say 0.5 meters along and draw a line down. So I've added a little section on here. So what I'm going to do there is, oops, take away that bit of line. So I take away that bit of line there. Okay. Take away this bit of line there. And then take away these sections there. Then take the two point tool, go to the end, which is half a meter from that point there, to the other side, slowly down. Right, there we have the tangent, double click. And of course I can double click there to make it work. The reason why you do that sort of nibbling the side off and then moving that is because if you take um, these tools here, No, that one doesn't allow you to so specify distance. If you use 3.1 and go up half a meter, you can't really jiggle around. Let me try the ground there, 0 0.5 meters. Um, there's no real allowance for that. Um, if I was to, say, draw 0 0.5 meters there and just cut across, now I might know that that is that point there. I take the tangent and start from there with everything left in. You don't get this, um, the guidelines to cut out exactly. So that is why you would do it that way. So let's make an even more complex um, curve. So I'm gonna take the origin here go along at some angle, go up, another angle, and back home. So we've got a solid shape that I want to make a lot more curved. So let's start with the basic one. This corner here, just take any point up there. And then we have goes change color, double click, cuts it off. Let's take this point there, other side, move along, double click. So here, same thing, let's take that point there, double click. Take that point there, over there, change color, double click. Um, I take this point there, over there, double click. Then maybe uh, um, a change of mind, I want to go kind of from there on here, tangent, double click. I can then take the Raise a bit, remove points. Now what you've seen here is that at somewhere I've clicked some a point which means which has taken a gap off, which means there's a hole somewhere. Um, the simple way to do this is to go with the pen tool and we can then zoom in, pan around and I'm not too sure exactly where. But actually here we are. Let's zoom in right here. That is where the problem lies. So we take the pen tool, just go across, we filled it in, take this, and move. So we actually haven't got a perfect one, I clicked in the wrong place, wasn't um, very careful there, but I've now filled it and it's now fine.